welcome to another Q Chat with Justine Dorn, that's me, and Ron Rayfield. Hi everybody. That's him. So today we have, oh my gosh, really good food from 200 years ago. We have a duck and we have fried potato balls. Okay, sign me up. When I read that, I thought, yes, I'm, I'm going to eat that. Yeah. <laughs> and here it is in front of us and oh my gosh, it's really good. It's really simple food. There's nothing weird in it and I think it will... Work with most people's palates, historic and modern. Oh, yeah. I already tried it. Ron hasn't. I haven't. And yes. I'm quite jealous. Because yes. <laughs> it smells divine. And before we go any farther, to see Justine make this, please go to our main channel, Early American, to watch her make this and other lovely dishes. From 200 years ago. Yes. Because over there, we cook it. Over here, we eat it. That's right. And that's what we're about to do. And we're the most dangerous cooking show on the internet. Yes. If you watch our drama episodes. Yes, especially when you watch how I cut things with a knife. That's what you probably think. We, we got killer skunks, we got pirates. We have fire. Fire, guns mm -hmm. going off, red coats, headless yes. horsemen. Yes. Anyway, yeah, okay, what am I waiting for? I don't know. The car I'm, already, up. I'm already uh, served up. Alright, so this is beautiful, ain't it? Oh, look at this side. This is the side Justine got to. Yes, she took that side, so I will... <laughs> I'll continue this side so you guys can look at the pretty side. <laughs> I have to say, I'm not very good at carving uh, birds. I, carving traditionally one, was a man's job. At least in this time period it was. Today too. So you have no excuses if you can't do it, Ron. Well, I don't want to break your bowl. I'm using a steak knife here. <laughs> Get in there. Get in my belly! What is going on? You bent the fork? Oh my gosh, look at our fork! Run! I guess they forgot to temper that one. Or to harden normal? it. Normal? Not normal. <laughs> That's not good. I'll give you another fork. So you can bend that one too. These cost a lot of money, they shouldn't be bending. <laughs> Here. I bent it back. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. It ain't pretty, but it's gonna taste good. Yes. Just bear with me a minute here. Yes. I mean, carving into a bird, you know, there's bones and whatnot. It's hard to do it elegantly, right? Yeah, I'm just done. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there Quite are hot. there are people who really know what they're doing when it comes to that, but we don't. I think I'm on a bone, Nate. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, there you go. He has a piece. He's in. Pick that chunk too. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> very greasy. Yeah, duck is very duck greasy. Duck is a very fatty animal. Oh my goodness. Yes. And there's nothing you can do about it. No matter what, when you cook a duck, it's just going to be uh, a lot of juices. <laughs> Which a lot of people like. Three. Four. Five. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And that's just his first plate. Today we're having some cider. Yes, please. That's an excellent Cut. way to preserve your apples through the winter. Yes. It is soft cider. It's not hard. Yeah. This is a family-friendly show here. <laughs> no hard cider here. Yes. I mean, you you would have preserved apples through winter by putting them in a cider. Or you, apples do keep for at least a couple months if you keep them in a real cold cellar. Yeah. And you can make apple butter and keep them... That way, technically, it's still apples. Or you mm. could uh, you could pot them, can them before they had to can yes. back then. All right, it is your turn to send us off on this blessing of this food. <laughs> okay, dear Lord, thank you for the company that we have with us today. Everyone watching us, we want them to all be healthy and happy this Thanksgiving season. And thank you for the health of Justine and Ron sitting here. We really appreciate everything that we've had, all the blessings, and the food we're about to eat. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was good. Thank you. You know it's going to be good? This is going to be so yeah, good. Yeah, it's going to be good. So here's the thing. How do you want to eat it? We got gravy. We have mustard. We have mushroom catsup. It's been a while, but we still like it. <laughs> I know I'm going to dump these in here first. I want the mushroom catsup. These remind me of, like, hush puppies. Yeah, mm. they do kind of like hush puppies. That's a very good bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good 
almost reminds me of stuffing or dressing. Some people like to call it dressing. I call it stuffing personally. Made into a ball and then fried. Yes, because it's got the texture of stuffing dressing and then the same seasonings. It's got the rosemary, the thyme, mm -hmm. little sage in there, onion, onion. Onion. Shallot, actually. Shallots. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Is this good with mushroom catsup? I don't think so. Please? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you. You got a dunk of potato ball in that. Okay. Mush or in the mustard. I'll two hand this. <laughs> and for those of you who are going to ask, what's mushroom catsup? It's like a Worcestershire A1 steak mm. sauce, but historically. It's very good. Yeah. Made from mushrooms, in case you didn't. Figure that one out. Mushroom <laughs> gets up. <laughs> yes. I'm going in. Oh yeah, that's some good eating. It's always good eating when you're cooking. Well, thanks. Unless I'm boiling jelly rolls. Mm -mm. That's good. I like it. So, if those of you who've never had duck before, duck is all dark meat. Yes. So if you don't like um, the dry parts of a chicken, for example, which I don't personally like, Ron likes those parts, but oh, I don't, I then you will love duck because the whole thing from head to toe to wing is just all dark meat. Very good. Yeah, it is really good. We roasted this for two hours. Two hours. Duck takes a while. I think because it has so much fat in it, the juices kind of have to come out. I think you're right. Mm. No, I'm not going to be eating this with a fork. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I guess I should have stayed at the obvious at the beginning. We got some snow in case you haven't seen. We got yeah. what, four inches here? We got four inches. And it's cold outside. You know what the craziest part is? Two days before we got four inches of snow, it was 80 degrees outside. Oh, yeah. It was nice too. That's just weird. <laughs> In fact, I don't remember this ever happening before. Mm -hmm. I've seen it flurry on Halloween before. I mean, with it being 80 degrees and then two days later? No, not that. It was in the 20s, two days later. That's at night, I mean. Mm. But that's a crazy drop. It is. Makes you get the sniffles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that sudden temperature change. Well, that's one tough turkey. Well, not turkey, but <laughs> duck. One ducky. Just tear apart, would you? He's talking about the, oh. the bones in a duck are like glued in there. They're yeah. really, really strong. Yeah. The meat is great. Okay, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to... Put face to food. Yeah. Commence chewing process. <laughs> the bones are tougher than a chicken. Oh yeah, sure. they are way harder to break. And I got some kind of like, let's see, I got part of the breastbone and thigh bone on this. <laughs> so it's just complicated. People 200 years ago were smart. <laughs> yeah, they were. Let's take mashed potatoes, roll them in a ball with herbs and seasonings, and fry them. It's genius! It really is. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't even have to be balls. You can make little cakes out of them and fry them in a skillet. Yeah, yeah. little flat cakes. Yeah. Like uh, potato cakes. Mm. Little, little papas. Little papas cakes. Yeah, papas. That's Spanish for potato. I taught them that today. <laughs> Papas. You might say, why are they speaking Spanish in Missouri? Well, this was Spanish territory at one time. Oh yeah, it was. It, it kind of went back and forth <laughs> between uh, French and Spanish. Yes. In the late 1600s, mm -hmm. the French explorers came to, I'll call it Louisiana, or basically the Midwest. They, <laughs> they claimed it after... <laughs> after the French and Indian War in the mid-1700s, <clears throat> It swamped. Spain was awarded the middle of America, which they called New France or Louisiana Territory, which went all the way from down Louisiana all the way up to Montana to Canada. It was huge. And then it wasn't until 1802, I believe, 
it went back to France for one year. And then Thomas Jefferson made the real estate deal of a lifetime. And what do you get, like an acre per dollar and bought probably less than mi that. millions of, of uh, mm -hmm. acres. Yeah. You got a good deal. Oh, yeah. So this was Spanish territory for a few decades. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of French culture, and the French culture stayed here. There might have been a little bit of Spanish culture that came in. Um, it was mostly just government officials and some military guys. It, it wasn't like there was a, a pilgrimage of Spaniards that landed here, and you know everybody moved in the next day. Mm -hmm. They they kept their French culture. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I'm just rambling. This is good. <laughs> It's very good. That's all I'm thinking about. You guys should definitely make these. You know, yeah. Thanksgiving is in what? Less than 10 days or something away. You, yeah. you guys should make these potato balls. And yeah, you should. It can be leftover potatoes. Nobody's going to know. Just put some herbs in it like you did. Uh-huh. And, you know. Make, well, make it how I make it if you want to be historically accurate. But, yeah. Uh, Which I wouldn't change anything And about. also the recipe said that you could also add diced <laughs> ham. No, that would be good. Or even cheese, maybe. Recipe did not say to add cheese. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to be modern. The cheese. modern ones have cheese in them. It could be good. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of mustard. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so earlier this week, I got up on the roof. I clean up the old chimney. Yeah, this is the time. We're about to use it a lot with the upcoming winter, so... We burn a lot of wood, and it's not always dry, so we get a lot of creosote, and that stuff is dangerous. Hmm. We get this black buildup, and eventually, it will catch on fire, and the whole chimney will become like a engulfed in flames. A funnel of death! Yeah, a funnel of death! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty metal. And you'll just see <laughs> flames coming out of the top of the chimney, and that's never any good. So, Never happened to me, but... So what I did was got myself a cedar branch. Because I ain't got one of them fancy new brushes that uh, they got in our time period. And just, you know, tied a rope to it and pulled it and it came through and, it, you know... Yeah, yeah. Do it, yeah, do it a couple times, get to do it right. Poor Ron was a little black in the face after that. He probably got black low now. Yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> there was lots of uh, problems with the kids they'd have due to chimney sweeps. They'd get stuck in there and die. They would have their bones be, they wouldn't grow fully hmm. because they spent so much time cooped up in there. They I would think have, it's because of what they would uh, breathe in. It did something to their bones. That too. It, yeah, you're not supposed to breathe in creosote, like dust. It's really bad. And uh, so the breathing problems, uh, eyesight problems, and one that really got me, they said that the boys had testicular possibly testicular cancer from it. I don't know how it's possible, but I held my breath whenever I was cleaning this because I don't want anything to do with that. No, I don't want you to have that either. <laughs> or but anybody, goodness gracious. Back then, they just say, okay, well, it's not good, sir. All right, I'll bite down on this and where's my, where's my hatchet? Yeah. And then you were if you want to live otherwise it's gonna continue on up into your <laughs> your your belly and you know you're gonna die eventually oh from it because it'll eat you up but yeah oh mm, my. not good so anyways they invented a couple of devices this really smart guy which is funny because his last name was smart his name was george smart in 1803 <laughs> to invent a new way of cleaning that was a his chimney. destiny yeah if your na <laughs> last name is smart you've got to be smart yeah it's your destiny or else you're just you know, a failure <laughs> but anyways, he invented this new fancy mechanical, they call it mechanical, I think, because it broke into pieces and it moved. So it's a bunch of sticks of wood and they have holes to them and there's a rope that runs through all of them. It keeps them all connected. So they're, they're loosey goosey. Hmm. But as you go up the chimney, you plug another one into the, into the bottom of the one above it <clears throat> and then line the other one up, uh... line the other one up. And when you get it up to the top of your chimney, then you yank on the, the rope, and the rope, there's like a, I'll call it an umbrella at the top, of bristles. So you're, and then it can bend and come apart because it's, you know, it's, it's pieces about this long, just judging off the picture. It, it, they might be six foot long, but judging off the picture, they look about two foot long. And so when you want to come down the chimney, you just snap it, lower it, snap it, lower it, 
And uh, so anyways, that that helped put an end to some of the children being stuck in the chimneys. Because they even passed an act in the uh, mid-1700s saying that uh, no kid under 14 shall be allowed oh, to wow. be in chimneys. Because they were putting as small as you could put in there. They definitely still did, though. You can oh, even yeah. find black and white pictures of kids from the early 20th century. Right. That were, their task was to go down chimneys. I wouldn't do it. Hmm. I would not do it. That'd be scary. They said some even had to do it naked because it was so tight and they needed every little inch. Could you imagine shimmying where it's like sharp bricks oh, and rocks? Oh, man. Ours is horrible. It's, it's rock, so it's going to cut you up. Now, I yeah. didn't get in ours because I, you know, I can't fit in there. But With or without <laughs> food, he cannot fit in that. But if you're desperate, <laughs> just use old cedar tree branch. It'll work good. Yes. Anyways. And that's what people have been doing for hundreds of years. I mean, they had brushes, too, but... Yeah. You know what you gotta do, what you gotta yeah, you, do. You can use a broom, a brush, mm -hmm. but that guy, George Smart, just made it easy. A young child. Hey, Sonny, you wanna make a quarter? <laughs> oh, sorry. A nickel? Or maybe a penny. That was so long ago. Hey, Sonny, you wanna eat supper tonight? <laughs> yeah. How about you do it and I'm gonna beat you up? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> they forced them to do it. Yeah, they had to. What kid would wanna do that? How do you like it in the mustard? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't use ketchup, but we don't have that yet. Well, they had some ketchup. This wasn't caught on yet. It wasn't like modern ketchup. No, it was more like a marinara. It yeah, was it was chunky, marinara sauce. Chunky, basically. Mm -hmm. The first ketchup <laughs> that came out that was called ketchup was a medicine. Oh, man. They keep breaking on you. A medicine for what? I don't know off the top of my head. Probably a cure all. Everything was cure all. Digestion, maybe? <laughs> mm. Who knows? Mm. Tomatoes are a good source of vitamin C. So if you could get the ketchup fresh when it still had vitamin C in it, I can see how that would be a medicine for a lot of mysterious disorders that they had back then. Mysterious disorders? Yeah, like, you know, a lack of vitamin C. Okay, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm butchering this because I'm just not a good carver. Don't honest. worry, it's already dead. We're Man. not hurting it. <laughs> hey, Julius Caesar, stop. <laughs> there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I'm just not a good carver. I'm a good eater, but I'm not a good carver. Yeah. Well, come on. Earlier he was criticizing me because I was trying to get my leg off of the duck. And he said, Justine, just twist the knife. Come on, twist the knife. And I'm saying, I am, Ron, I am. What am I doing wrong? It's like, the, now whole, you know. the whole thing is a bone on top. It's armored. It's yeah. a tank. I can not I can slice the turkey. So give me some credit. I don't I'm know. I'm trying to get this wing. Just come on. If I don't see it, it didn't happen, right? Uh, so, uh, I don't see no turkey carving skills here, Ron. <laughs> but this ain't no turkey. There, that's a piece. <laughs> Just come over to my plate, please. There we go. We're getting okay. somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Oh, yeah, we're getting somewhere after the thing's been made. It's these big darn wings they got. They it, got wings. Very big wings. Twice the size, sometimes three times the size of a chicken. Because they fly. Chicken flies. I'm embarrassing myself on national TV right now, but I don't care. I'm hungry. He got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> please, don't, please don't be ashamed of my butchering skills. Do you think I'm judging you right now? No, but they, they all are. Are you judging Ron? Please don't. <laughs> I did say earlier that every man needs to know how to carve a bird, and uh... I got it off, didn't I? Yeah, but you killed the thing twice. <laughs> hey, as long as you can eat it. But now do you understand why I had a hard time earlier trying yes, to lay off of it? I do. It, the bones on a duck are somehow just stronger than the, the ligaments and whatnot than on a chicken. Mm -hmm. I totally Tremendously understand. stronger. I get it. Hmm. Okay, so while Ron eats... <laughs> We got a really lovely gift in the mail uh, the day before yesterday, and it's gonna be for our Christmas tree. Now, back then, 
A piece went that way somewhere. Do I have to clean this up here? <laughs> Continue. <laughs> It'll be for our future Christmas tree at our future homestead. Now, back in this time period in the United States, it was German immigrants who had Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. And actually, I found something that was pretty cool. Oh, share it. The first reference that we have in Amer as America as a continent, so Canada and the United States, 1881, I forget the lady's name. 1781, Ron. Sorry, did I say 18? Yeah, you did. My bad. <laughs> in the future. Anyway, <laughs> in 1781, a British officer's uh, wife who was stationed up in Quebec, <clears throat> he happened to be German, by the way, uh, she came over, she was pregnant, and she brought her kids, and they set up a Christmas tree, and mm -hmm. it was lit up. There's a painting, mm -hmm. and that's the okay. recorded history of the first illuminated Christmas tree in in a home in America. Yes, in a home. So that was pretty cool to find that out. And that's 40 years before our time. <laughs> so a lot can happen in 40 years. Right, and there's one-offs everywhere. Just because it's not in a museum and a painting doesn't mm -hmm. mean it didn't happen. Now you have to keep things within reason, obviously. You know. But. <laughs> well, there's a lot of references to, to Christmas trees in people's houses in the 1830s. A lot. So, it's safe to assume that by the 1820s, some people were doing it. Right. But it was still a German-only thing by this time period, until we get to the Victorian period. But I think we're going to do it. Ron make sure, wants make sure, to make sure do you, it. Make sure you vote in that poll. Should we do it or should we not? Ron wants a Christmas tree. And the thing is, from, I'll water it. from my dad's side, I am German. <laughs> I am German and Scottish. My last name is Dorn, D-O-R-N, which is literally the German word for thorn. Now you guys know why Yeah, like a, is. like a thorn bush, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I have made that joke many a time that I'm a Dorn in someone's butt. <laughs> And then Ron's last name is Rayfield, which is a very, which is a British last name. We figured that much out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a red coat, apparently. Yeah, so I tell him that we are reverse Outlander because back in the, because so the ancestors from my dad's side, 18th century and well mid 18th century and later it's German, but they're originally all Scottish and they moved to Germany. Hmm. So in the Outlander time period, if you don't know, that's a, a very amazing, fantastic show. Oh yeah, the production is excellent. Yes, it's a it's set in the 18th century. <laughs> now, it's not a show for kids, just to be clear. No. But the production is it's, top notch. It's top notch. You can't beat it. Yeah, Ron got me obsessed with Outlander. Is anyone else here also equally obsessed with Outlander? They will be. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, I do have kind of a crush on Claire. Everyone's looking at Jamie, he's the male character. I'm like... Yeah, he's cool, but Claire, <laughs> Claire is where it's at. She's not as pretty as you. Oh, please, but thank you. I, I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> it's okay. It's a white lie. <laughs> so anyway, in the story, uh, it's there's a battle, there's a war between Scotland and mainland England. Mm -hmm. Look for Latin. Yeah, Culloden. It the Battle 17, of Culloden, which 17, is a real battle that happened. 1740s is when it starts out. Yeah. And so... The Jacobites and the British. Yeah. We are... Uh, so back in the time period, you would have been a red coat. Yep. And I would have been on the other side. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Isn't history just so amazing like that? Like, if, do some of you guys believe in past lives? Can you imagine your past self and who you now know and who those people were in their past lives? Maybe you guys were arch enemies in a past life or maybe you were lovers in a past life or who knows, but isn't it just I like to think, incredible? I'm just like George Washington. He was once a red coat and then he wasn't. So my family was once British and now they're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me go back to what I was doing with all that. Christmas! Christmas tree! There we go. We got a present! So this, uh, this is a Quaker style? A shaker style! Shaker. We love shaker style boxes. This didn't come with the present, but we just found a box for it. We have a little mini collection of shaker style boxes now. Your hands clean? Yeah. Okay. So in it was our gift. <clears throat> And it is 
from Monticello. It's Christmas tree decorations that all represent the founding fathers. Yeah, the founding fathers <laughs> in uh, the 18th and very early 19th centuries. Yeah, these are in the U.S. Very nice. They're from Monticello. Oh, they're handmade. Yeah, so and, so these represent uh, presidents and their wives and people that were very close friends with the presidents. Like Ben Franklin. Yeah, <laughs> and this is Betsy Ross. Yes, and no, we don't have red coats. It's a president <laughs> tree. The red coats were worn by musicians in the Continental Army. It's stuck on a strike bar. Oh, look at that. Well, <laughs> anyways, so they're not British soldiers. These are American soldiers but they're musicians yeah the musicians wear red coats here's another one don't ask me why it's just the way they did it but these are these are handmade they're handmade very, very nice handmade dolls these came from our good friend carrie who lives out in california yes and each one of them <laughs> represents a different president yeah. or he's holding the constitution he's holding uh what's he holding he's got a book in his hand the one you have in your hand. oh what's it say on it monroe doctrine okay yep so we got Monroe in here, we got Madison. Dolly Madison, I learned that, that she saved the big oil painting of George Washington from the White House whenever the White House was being burnt in 1812 by the this British. This is her. So that's what she's known for. And also being first lady, but. Yeah, she was a first lady. She ran back in the flames and got the picture of old George. And that's pretty heroic. Yeah, I'd do the same thing. So it's just uh, really cute. Yeah, they're they're high quality. They're yeah, they're handmade. I mean, how many people have Christmas tree decorations with tricorns? <laughs> this guy's got. Is that a tricorn? Yes. This is Martha Washington. <laughs> it's just really cute. Yeah, they're very nice. It says on on it the packaging. This is not a toy. So uh, expensive for it. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to give this to a kid, they'd probably tear it apart. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we got that as a present in the mail. We were not expecting it from a very lovely lady named Carrie, and we appreciate it greatly because mm -hmm. we don't have any Christmas decorations. So this oh. is. Well, I mean, we're set for life. Like, we don't need any more Christmas decorations. You put this in a tree, and then you have a cranberry garland. Which, and maybe some dried other fruit. Which will make that if you guys want for us to do a tree. Yes. We'll, uh, we'll do the cranberry garland. What, yes. what other little stuff would you put on? Like, little bows, I guess. Yeah, you could tie little bows. I mean, they they... Some households put candles, little tiny candles in the tree. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not for obvious reasons. This place goes up in flames. We won't see you guys anymore for a while. Yeah, <laughs> until our house is built. Yeah. Well, I ain't doing it again. No, we're not building this again. <laughs> no way. No. So, yeah. And they're decorated on both sides. Yeah, they're, they're very nice. They are very nice. And these were purchased from Monticello. Mm -hmm. And they've got other people too on there. Yep, yeah, they do. But this, the guys who made these, goodness, I don't remember the name of the company. The, the actual, yeah. Yeah, the company who made them. But they don't only do 18th century. They all, I've also seen Abraham Lincoln dolls. And I think they got Santa Claus and... Yeah. <laughs> Other stuff, but you could find out who makes them by going to Monticello and looking at the the name on these dolls and yes. how they make them to find that maker. Yes. Which brings me to my next subject while we're talking about <clears throat> people that make stuff. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but we stopped by the ASL Peter store, the local Peter store in St. Jen the other day. Oh yeah, we need to talk and, about uh, that. Turns out Somebody tried to order something that they seen on our show and the only way to do that is to get on the website So they did that. They looked at the picture. They ordered it. They got it and said well This ain't what Ron and Justine have. I well, could be wrong. I think it's this. Yes These spoons. We didn't hear anything about this by the way until after the pewter people told us about what happened So anyways, this person looked at the picture and said that's it and ordered it and then when it arrived 
they said, well, I don't want this. This ain't what it is, even though it matched the picture. So if you want to order something that we have, please be really sure that that's what you're picking out. Because this person was very rude to them. They, they called them and said, well, well, I'm not yeah. going to repeat what they said, but they said a bunch of nasty stuff, apparently. Yeah, but it sounds like they were kind of cursing them out, and they yeah. called multiple times. And that's and, uncalled for, because the yeah, people were very they're nice. They're very, very nice people. <laughs> and, had, mean, and had there been a mistake, they would have worked with you, but... Tom told me that, you know, they sent them the spoon that was ordered, and that's the spoon that the, the lady selected, so I'm not right. sure what the reason for the ignorance was. And I feel bad for even mentioning them because somebody, like Justine said, cursed them out. And... Yeah, but the thing is, ASL Pewter, they're not affiliated with us, <laughs> no. they're just our friends. They don't yeah. work for us, we don't work for them. Yeah. There's no exchange of money at all that goes between us, we're just friends. Sometimes they invite us over for dinner and that's the extent of it. So if you call them and say, hey, I want a spoon just like they have an early American, they're our friends, but they might not really understand what you're talking about because they don't work for us and we don't claim that they do. And another thing is they recently had a very significant death in the family, um, as well as a couple of surgeries so they're mentally they're in a, a kind of a weakened state right now so this phone call really really upset them so if you're a nice guy or gal and uh even just a call be like hey i heard about you guys on uh, the show and i looked at your stuff it's nice stuff if you want to order something that'd be great too but uh might be somebody wants to you know play the nice role and just give them a phone call and be like Hope you're having a great day. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that lift their spirits up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because they recently came back from a funeral and they don't need someone to call them cursing them out over spoons. Right. And they do sell this spoon. Yeah, they do sell this spoon. <laughs> I, I held it in my hand this week and I was like, well, that's the same one we got. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Hey, can I show them our spoon rack? Yeah. Be careful okay. taking it off the wall. So yeah, don't... it's hanging on a nail. <laughs> Sorry if my head's cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. I'm trying. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, are there two nails? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> my I'll bed. hold the rack and you get the spoons. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a spoon rack that Ron made. <clears throat> and we have it hanging on our wall. So back then, spoons were not only pewter, they were silver too, so you'd want to show off your silver. Mm -hmm. This is all pewter though. So, it's, that's the reason to show it off. Yep, everything on here is pewter. And some people today still have these too, like if you're a collector of uh, spoons that say like Nevada or Rhode Island. Yes. Wherever you travel to, instead of getting shot glasses, you get spoons, you would have a spoon rack. So this is just an example of <clears throat> the shape of one, of a double decker. Yeah, Ron made it. Uh, I seen it in a book, so I just kind of drew the lines out and cut it out. But yeah. You can decorate it, paint it any color you want. You can do it half the size. You can put a box down here mm -hmm. and just have one rack. But uh, So what's the story of our spoons? We came back with vengeance. And I actually think we have a couple on the floor that I dropped. Because I thought we had most of them filled. Yeah, we now have five of these. Yeah, we now oh, have wait. five of these. There it is, right there. There's the only thing we're missing is our gravy ladle, which is dirty, because we used it earlier. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so we used to only have two pewter spoons, because that's all we could afford. But Ron went to a uh, wood furniture, like a, arts and crafts an arts festival. and crafts festival, <laughs> and uh, we had this exact, this very same spoon rack hanging out to dis as display, because if someone wanted to order a spoon rack, because Ron makes custom wood furniture, so mm -hmm. pretty much all the furniture that you see in this cabin, Ron made it. Everything in here. This table. Except for chairs. Everything. Everything but the chairs. Yeah, he doesn't do chairs. <laughs> Mantle, lantern, shelves, boxes, everything. whatever. Yeah. The, what you call it? Sand timer, hourglass, candlestick holder, gun, yep, he potato masher. Yeah, he made it. So we had this hanging up there for display, and we had two of our pewter spoons on there, just so people knew what in the world it was. And someone stole our pewter spoons. Yep. They, they were there one minute, and then the next minute they were gone. And these are the spoons that we eat with all the time. I these mean, are excellent spoons. I would say they're 
almost a tablespoon or maybe a tablespoon but they're 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 cupped more and it just they're great you know yes for for soup or even serving up they're just they're perfect, perfect for everything size. yep and, and these are called a dog nose dog nose because of this here I don't personally see it, but they say if you look at it, it looks like a head of a dog and then the nose, the snout, <laughs> the snoot. The snook, the snook sticking out. Same. So we didn't have our two pewter spoons for a couple of months and then we we struck back with vengeance and now we have five of them. These have it too. So whoever's out there with our pewter spoons, I hope you're enjoying them. They're pretty nice spoons, but guess what? Now we got five spoons and you only got two. And you ain't coming Dude. back for more. That's right. Next year, we're just, <laughs> next year for Arts and Crafts Festival, we're just gonna put wooden spoons in there. We learned our lesson. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm naive about this world. I mean, it just well, blew my mind that someone would do that. These things cost too much money. Each spoon's like twelve bucks, but yeah. you're getting a handcrafted quality item that'll last literally it, forever as long as no one steals and it. And you can't really just buy it anywhere, so it, it's really rude to do that. Yes. So that's enough talking about spoons. <laughs> we talked quite a lot about spoons. Well, while you're putting that up, I'll mention the random fact. Oh. We did the uh, <clears throat> Veterans Day thing the other day. The local guy actually filmed me and Michael uh, doing the drumming, so here's that. Hi everybody, I'm Ron Rayfield and this is Michael Jerntown. And today we're playing drums for the Colonial Militia here in St. Genevieve at Pecana Palooza. Uh, we're doing the military timeline down here in the historic district. Yeah, I'm ready for dessert. Oh, that's right! We got hot cocoa. Wait, we... wait, 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 wait. Oh. I want one more. I'll take the big one. <laughs> so, for dessert, we got hot cocoa. We have and hot yes, cocoa? Yes, they had hot cocoa, hot chocolate back then. Yes. This was actually George Washington's favorite breakfast drink, so every morning before he'd ride 20 miles on his steed. Chocolate was his secret. Martha? I want some of that chocolate gravy. People were pretty obsessed with chocolate back then. I mean, maybe even more than we are now, which is saying a lot. But, I mean, would you eat chocolate for breakfast? Unless it's a chocolate muffin, I suppose. That's probably why his teeth got so bad. That could be why. But, I mean, we don't drink it that thick. But, you would drink thick like gravy. Yeah, mm. back then, hot chocolate was very, very thick. And Syrup like. Now, if you'd like to see us make hot chocolate, I did it last year. Yeah, the, the video is titled Chop Wood and Make Hot Chocolate. That's what <laughs> ain't going to be on there. Sometimes the heat warps it and I can't get... Oh, wow. Good job, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you'd like to see the hot chocolate be made, the recipe is there. I show about how much you use. Uh, Can you hold the cup Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Could you hold my cup up? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You know, funny thing, our good friend Peter up there in Canada. Yeah, he has his own YouTube channel, actually. <laughs> yeah, the Woodland Escape. The Woodland Escape. Has the exact same um, copper kettle here as we do. <laughs> That's a crazy coincidence. He showed it on a video about a month ago. I forget which video it was. And I'm just like, wait a minute. I've never seen that before. That's our mm -hmm. kettle. So that was funny. Yeah, and we and it's crazy coincidence because we just found this in a random antique store. And we've never seen one like it before. And we, yeah, we've never seen one like it in person <laughs> since then either. So I, it's just a weird coincidence that he has it, and I can't tell you guys where we got it, unfortunately, like where yeah. to get it because it was just a one-off from an antique mall. Paid, uh, I think, eighteen dollars for this. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it too. 
Oh, it's gonna be hot. Oh, uh, there's steam coming yeah. off of it. You be careful. I better wait a second. <laughs> Both of us, we have sissy mouths. We can't really handle really hot drinks. <laughs> sissy mouths. Yeah. What you call me? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, I, sissy. I saw how you carved that bird. <laughs> Come on. As good as a girl. <laughs> Ron, don't be upset. Ron, don't drink your cider and cry. No, I was kidding. I'm not loved. Ron, I do love you. You do? Yes. Come back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, very much. you love me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a normal reaction. <laughs> well, I got some news. Oh, he always says that. Actually, I was hoping that would jog my memory to say what I was going to say. You don't even know what the news is? No. Oh, I do now. Um, <laughs> so, we just had our meal here. Yes. That was appropriate for a Thanksgiving meal. But next week, for Thanksgiving, we're going to do pumpkin pie over on Early American. A pumpkin pie comparison <laughs> video on Frontier Patriots, oh, on Frontier too. Patriot, yes. And we're going to have a special guest. We won't yes. tell you who it is, but it's somebody you won't be expecting. I will give you a hint. I'm trying to make peace with this individual. And I've, re <laughs> I've realized that it's very important to my success and happiness if I make peace with this individual. Well, I'm making peace with him. Oh yeah, and, He's that, a double -crosser. And, that, and and that's another hint. It's a man. Yeah. So. Try to tell him. No. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Next week for the chew chat, we will have a special guest, and uh, hopefully my cooking impresses him because he's been giving us some issues lately. Yeah. But for real, in real life, he said, uh, "Have you ever got a spot when you need somebody to eat some stuff?" Yeah. So for the comparison, I figured it'd be good to have, and he really doesn't even like pumpkin pie that right, much. Right, so we're going to have... But he said he would eat it, and he said it'd give a good non-bias yeah, towards yeah. which one's the best. Because both of us love pumpkin pie. So here's what our next uh, idea is, is we are going to make three different pumpkin pies. The first one is going to be the first pumpkin pie... Literally a dish pumpkin pie. ...that you could find um, in... 1621. In six from 1621. From That's the, first, the earliest one I could find. From the first Thanksgiving. Yes. And the funny thing is, it's not like what you think. It's not. It <laughs> doesn't look like a pumpkin pie at all. It looks like a pumpkin. It has pumpkins involved in it, but it's not a traditional pumpkin pie like what we would consider it to be. Because they didn't have flour for the, yeah, they to, couldn't, make, to make a crust. Yeah, they couldn't get their hands on flour at that time. <laughs> That was a long time before 1820. I mean, the sa almost the same amount of time between now and 1820. Yeah. So people they, back then, if you told someone from 1820 about the 1600s, they'd say, wow. oh, wow, that was a really long time ago to put it in centuries. a perspective for how food has changed. So we're doing 1600s. We're doing um, an early 19th century pumpkin pie to yep. see how it changed and all that time. And then we're just doing a modern one. I don't know yet if it'll be your recipe or my recipe. Probably yours, because you really yes. hyped it up. <laughs> yeah, he's hyped it up so much that I just have to try it. it it's good. Yeah. It's... Now, I ain't made one for years, so I hope it's good. Okay, I'm sure it's That's my good. excuse if it sucks. He's already set himself <laughs> up for that. Well, there's a lot of variables. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so the atmospheric conditions, <laughs> the humidity, and the wind. Yeah. So that would be a that would be a good fun video. Yeah, we're gonna try all of them out, see how they've changed, and at the end we'll pick which one is our favorite. So both of us love anything to do with pumpkin flavor oh, anyway. Right. So we wanted to bring in someone who has a non-biased decision. So he'll either yeah, he'll either hate it or he'll yeah, he'll, be like, okay, it's not bad. He'll cause... either hate all of them or he might actually pick one because he said he don't really like pumpkin pie anyway, so we'll see. Hmm. Okay, is it hot? Is it cool enough I, for us to drink I mean, it? I can drink it, but I'm not a sissy. Oh, be please. Drink it! I did! Oh. It smells good. It does smell good. It tastes good, too. Hmm. Even oh. after all the mustard and... The fragrant potato balls with the <laughs> herbs, it's still pretty good. That is really good. Hmm. Was there a hot tub going on in your mouth? 
Hey, they had hot tubs back then. Did they? Or heated baths. Yeah, they did have heated <laughs> baths back then. They've had heated swimming pools since ancient Rome. They would uh, have a swimming pool on the main floor and then in the basement level beneath the swimming pool. This is ancient Rome we're talking about. Oh. They would have a giant fire going on beneath the swimming pool. Wow. So it's kind of like you're cooking. Yeah, it's like a big uh, crab boil. Yes, a big old crab boil. <laughs> you people down there in Louisiana know all about that, don't you? Yes, you do. Or a crawdad boil. Broil. Yeah. They like, them, they like them crawdads, that Creole food. Hmm. You know, somebody it's commented, good. they're like, how come you guys don't do any fish? There are lots of fish recipes. The problem is we're in the middle of America, so we don't have we catch don't, of the day. We don't have the cod. We don't have the salmon, the salmon and all that. It's hard to get a whole fish, and realistically, we wouldn't have that here then. And I don't like fish. Okay, here's the real reason we don't do it, because Ron don't like fish, and everything he just said, just forget about it. The real reason he don't like fish. That's the main reason, yes. Yeah, that's the main reason. People I mean, eat a lot of seafood in this area. I would... But they would eat catfish and trout. I... I would do it for you guys. Hmm. But I would only take a couple bites. Wow, what a hero. Isn't he a hero, guys? Give a round of applause for Ron Rayfield. He's willing to eat a little bite of catfish for you. Oh, my hero. Oh. So I would, I would do it. But, oh. uh. Someday. Yeah, someday. Someday we'll do it. <laughs> someday. I'll rig me up a little pole and I'll go out there to the pond and catch a fish. I hate and fishing. Throw it back I in. hate it. I hate it. If I don't catch anything in five minutes, I'm done. That's it. I like to drive the boat, but I <laughs> hate fishing. Ever since I was looking, I hate it. I've never gone fishing before, but I think I'd actually quite like it. Well, the worst part's when you get the hook like hooked on. It's like, Dad, help me! And it's one of those three-sided hooks, and it's like on like, your own mouth. I've had it. I've been hooked all over. <laughs> I hate you fishing. Do I what? hate it. <laughs> You do realize that the hook is for the fish, not for you, well, when right? You're, well, when you're a little kid and you're casting and there's limbs and stuff, <laughs> it doesn't go very far. You got too much string hanging down and you... Oh, oh. It's on your ear. Yeah. Okay, now I know the real reason why Ron don't like seafood. Oh my gosh, this is everything is just coming to light now before your eyes. Full circle, right? You're traumatized by an experience you had as a kid. Did you throw yourself into the water? It's hot in here, by the way. Did he hook himself by the ear and throw and cast himself into the water? It's like something the Three Stooges would have done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you survived. I need more cocoa. <laughs> I need more cocoa. It's quite warm in here. Yeah. We got the wood stove going. Mm -hmm. And we got the fire going. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Good nope. job, Ron. I love hot chocolate. Oh, me too. I love now, chocolate. Now, <laughs> I have to mention something modern because it has to do with my business. I don't even know what he's going <clears> to <throat> say. The first weekend of December, hmm. we are doing Santa photos. Oh, yeah. In town at Candy Shop. Yes. So you can find information of that <laughs> on my website at ronnyrayfieldphotography.com yes if you would like a really nice santa photo we we got a lovely couple mr and mrs claus mm -hmm. coming they're and, actually reenactors but they also do santa claus and, and they're the real deal so if you live within the area and you'd like to have a really nice santa picture and say what's up to us while we sign you in and take the picture i'll be dressed like an elf yeah she'll be my helper that's right you gotta um, do what you gotta do to make money feel free to come on down um it, it should be a good time there's a, there's yes. also a christmas parade that same day uh, the, the militia will be in part of that, and uh, it'll just be a fun day. I think Candy will probably have cider or, or something, or, or candy canes. She usually has a little something as a complimentary for people to come by for Santa photos. Yes. So, just wanted to put that out there. Yes, because Ron's a woodworker, but he's also a professional photographer. Yeah. So, throughout the year, he does a couple of these family photo events. Because if you were to hire a private photographer for a session... Oh, it'd be like 350 bucks. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be <laughs> quite a lot of money. Um, but if you just come to an event... These are $45. You $45. Get, you get three photos for $45. Three and, different poses. Yes, three different poses. And they are edited and distributed to you digitally. If you'd like extra photos, they're only $5 a piece. And Ron is so good. If, you're, if you have a photo with a bunch of people on it and one kid has his eyes closed... 
He oh. <laughs> he can copy and paste the kid's head to one where his eyes are open. I do it all the time. I, I mm. when there's multiple kids and somebody's got their eyes closed, the other one's got their mouth open, and the third one is like looking right at you. I'll take a bunch of pictures and then I'll figure out from the other ones. I'll take them, copy and paste their heads over to the other, and we have a nice picture. Yes. Because you almost never get all three of them to look at you at the same time. Yes. So he will give you a very good professional photo. I'm very quick. For Not the cheapest no, price Not too around. Horn, but. We're very quick. We Our turnaround time is about 10 days. Yep, 10 days. It depends days. on how many people show up. We usually get yep. about 100 families, and that's just, it's a crazy nightmare. Yeah, but that's a really big money maker for us during the year. You know, we're trying to make yeah. our Because uh, that's the slow make our house. Too. After Christmas, things really drop off until the mm -hmm. spring once people get their tax money back. Then they start ordering furniture, yes. and it's nobody wants their picture taken in dead of winter, so... Uh, this is kind of last hurrah until spring for that, but uh, yep. So just meet up with us at Sassafras Creek Originals yeah. in St. Genevieve, Missouri, on the date that's on the flyer. Yeah, and Ron and, will take your photo. And if you don't have uh, kids, you know, just you don't have to. You don't have to bring People your kids. come there with their dogs. Yeah, bring your dog, or just bring your yeah. friend, or just bring your your husband. Bring yourself. <laughs> husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Your mom. Or yeah, bring your parents. Your grandma. Yeah. Or if you just want a nice picture yourself, I mean, come yeah. on by. Sometimes people do that. I had one lady come last mm. year with a lizard. Or with a, a, lizard. a, dra a dragon. A it, bearded she, dragon? A bearded dragon, yeah. It was like yay long and she held it like this. Mm. And uh, yeah, she wanted a, a picture of her with the bearded dragon. Yeah. With Santa Claus. We've had cats, mm -hmm. we've had dogs. Um, but that was pretty cool. Two legs, four legs, three legs, five. Tails, wings. Wings, we don't care. <laughs> Fins, it's okay. As long as I don't get eaten. Yeah. No, no bears. No now. lions. No lions or bears. Or tigers. Or oh tigers. My. <laughs> okay, this guys. It's hot. Wow. Yeah. I can't even grab it's it. staying hot because it's being kept in here. Well, we're going to go head on out now. Thank you so much for watching. It was a really, really good one. The food oh, was yeah. spectacular. I would have ate more, but it's hard to eat. So yeah. later. This evening, I'm gonna get a little messy, but I didn't want to do that to you guys on camera, so. Oh, so you mean it can get worse than that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I'm gonna dive in. I didn't want to dive in on, you know. That's how he's gonna eat. Just face first, plant it in that plate. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, guys. you take care. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Until next time, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.